Hello, I'm Raisa Chintami of the Indonesia channel at the ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta. Welcome to ASEAN Today, your weekly look at the dynamic Southeast Asia region. New leaders were chosen in several ASEAN states, first in Thailand. Voting took place on March 24th, and by late May, it was expected that the country's prime minister would remain the same. Incumbent Prayuth Chan Ocha would lead again in a coalition government. The former general led a military coup in 2014 and now will lead a second term as a civilian. The election commission had postponed the announcement of the results due to vote counting problems. And in Indonesia, the incumbent also won a second term in an election marred by street violence. President Joko Widodo was certified the winner on May 21st, defeating former General Prabowo Subianto for the second time. The margin of victory was 11 percent. But after the results were announced, street protests turned violent. Eight people were killed, with more than 700 hurt in several areas of Jakarta. Subianto has filed a legal challenge of the results, with a ruling due on June 28th. We'll hear from the winner shortly in our Hot Seat segment. The president of the Philippines got a political boost in the midterm elections. Results of the May 13th voting showed that allies of Rodrigo Duterte won a majority of the 12 Senate seats at stake. With nine Duterte backers and three unaligned politicians in the 24-member Senate, only four opposition members remain. Also elected was the president's former national police chief, Ronald De La Rosa. He enforced Duterte's crackdown on illegal drugs in a campaign that left thousands of suspects dead and drew international condemnation. Duterte's three children also won races for mayor, vice mayor and a congressional seat representing their southern home region of Davao City. The adoption of digital payment systems has progressed rapidly in several Southeast Asian countries. Thailand is one of them, eagerly transforming itself into a cashless society. The Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI, is a program led by China in cooperation with major financial institutions from countries such as Thailand. The goal is to promote the flow of capital and build safer and more convenient financial services. In 2016, China's UnionPay International partnered with the Thai Payment Network to launch Thailand's first local card network for processing electronic payments. The move is aimed to encourage the use of electronic payments that provide benefits to merchants and consumers. It has been widely accepted by Thai consumers in moving to a cashless society. ว่าทางบริษัทไทยเพมิเน็ตเวิร์กเนี่ยก็คุ้นเคยกับการใช้เงินสดเป็นหลักนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยก็ต้องอาศัยระยะเวลาในการที่จะเอ่อผู้บริโภคเนี่ยจะมีการเปล
You're watching ASEAN Today. I'm Raisa Chintami in Jakarta. Indonesia's presidential vote on April 17th gained international attention as the world's biggest one-day election. More than 150 million voters cast ballots across the archipelago. After results were made official, the winner had words for the public. Seluruh rakyat yang saya cintai, yang saya banggakan, kita bangsa Indonesia patut berbangga, patut berbahagia, dan patut bersyukur bahwa kita telah terbukti menjadi bangsa yang dewasa. Dewasa dalam berdemokrasi, dewasa dalam melaksanakan pemilu, Dewasa dalam berbangsa dan bernegara. Bukti nyatanya adalah kedewasaan kita berdemokrasi. Kemampuan kita untuk menyelesaikan pemilu yang jujur dan adil, serta pemilu yang penuh dengan perdamaian dan kegembiraan. Pemilu demi pemilu telah kita lalui dengan penuh kedewasaan. Pemilu yang sekarang ini, saya meyakini insya Allah akan bisa kita lalui dengan damai sesuai dengan amanat konstitusi yang kita miliki. Alhamdulillah, puji dan syukur kita panjatkan kehadirat Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Rekapitulasi nasional pemilu serentak 2019 pada dini hari tadi. Rakyat Indonesia telah menentukan pilihannya, baik dalam pileg maupun pilpres. Inilah makna dari hakiki, hakikat rakyat yang berdaulat. Saya dan Pak Kiai Haji Ma'ruf Amin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada seluruh rakyat Indonesia dimanapun berada atas kepercayaan yang diberikan kepada kami berdua. Kepercayaan dan amanah rakyat kepada kami tersebut akan kami wujudkan dalam program-program pembangunan yang adil dan merata untuk seluruh golongan dan seluruh lapisan masyarakat di seluruh sok tanah air Indonesia. Setelah dilantik di bulan Oktober nanti, kami adalah presiden dan wakil presiden seluruh rakyat Indonesia. Kami adalah pemimpin dan pengayom dari 100% rakyat Indonesia. Kami akan berjuang keras demi terwujudnya keadilan sosial bagi seluruh rakyat Indonesia, bagi 100% rakyat Indonesia. Marilah kita bersatu padu membangun bangsa dan tanah air tercinta demi kedamaian, demi kesejahteraan generasi kita mendatang, serta generasi anak cucu kita di masa depan. Terakhir, saya mengapresiasi setinggi-tingginya atas kinerja penyelenggara dan pengawas pemilu, KPU dan Bawaslu, kepada tokoh masyarakat dan juga para peserta pemilu, kepada aparat keamanan TNI dan Polri, serta semua pihak, termasuk para saksi yang telah siang dan malam bekerja dengan tulus demi pemilu yang adil dan jujur. Indonesia's president is limited to two five-year terms. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. Another piece of the evolution puzzle is found in the Philippines. That's next. This is ASEAN Today coming to you from Jakarta, home of the ASEAN Secretariat a previously unknown human species that lived more than 50,000 years ago, has been dug up in the Philippines. ASEAN Today's Fausal Azim reports on the latest chapter in the evolution of man. Archaeologists who discovered the fossil bones and teeth in the northern Philippines called for a better protection of the popular limestone cave complex where the remains were unearthed. Filipino archaeologists 
Arman Salfado Mijares said the discovery in Kalao Cave in Cagayan province made the Philippines an important research source on human evolution. Before in Southeast Asia, human record is simple. Homo erectus in Java, Homo sapiens in the rest of Southeast Asia. Now it's more complicated because we add new, new, two new uh, species, Homo sapiens in Flores and now Homo sapiens in Luzon. So it's more complicated things out. And with that, our contribution to the world's knowledge is, of course, properly stated. The new species is called Homo luzonensis, after the main northern islands of Luzon. That's where the remains were dug up beginning in 2007. Beaming the pride, Bijares displayed the six fragments of bones from the feet, hands, and thigh, and seven teeth of three individuals. The Philippines are scientific uh, community in the spotlight of a scientific endeavor. So we're now, we, before we're just peripheral to this debate of human evolution because we don't have a proper fossil, now we do have a new species and new fossils that, that can, that will start a new debate on how humans evolve, adapted to different situations. Tests show that two of the fossil fragments had minimum ages of 50,000 years and 67,000 years, according to a study published by the scientific journal Nature. Another veteran archaeologist, as of Dyson, said the human remains from Kalao were the oldest to be found in the Philippines, predating those discovered in Tabun Cave on the western island of Palawan by thousands of years. The archaeological find could attract more scientists and Dyson worries that it could also draw vandals and treasure hunters who could threaten the Seven Chamber Cave Complex, also a popular tourism destination. Well, I hope that is the work of the government or the uh, municipal local government units uh, to provide security in their own, because this is an asset already in their own municipality. You cannot have another Kalaw cave anywhere. So I think the province of Cagayan or the municipality of Peña Blanca should be the one who, lead, who will lead on the security of what they have now, since it's a worldwide known uh, site for human evolution. This find contributes a new insight into modern man's beginnings. But experts such as Dyson say it is also raises new questions in the history of the evolutions of man. Fauzul Azim for ASEAN Today. Here are several events on the ASEAN calendar. Martin Garrix, Porter Robinson and Skrillex will take the stage at Ultra Singapore on June 8th and 9th. The world's most popular musical will premiere in Kuala Lumpur from June 15th to July 7th. And the Pintadas Kasadian Festival 2019 will color the streets of Tacloban City in the Philippines on June 29th. Indonesia is making plans to move its capital away from the congested island of Java to boost countrywide development. ASEAN Today's Wendy Widiantini explains why leaders are pushing for relocation. It was two years ago when President Joko Widodo brought up the idea of moving the country's capital from Jakarta, a congested concrete city with a population of 10 million. The destination is Palangkaraya in central Kalimantan. And ever since then, the government has been quietly doing research into the benefits of such a move. Widodo recently confirmed the government's plan, saying it's the best for Jakarta and the well-being of Indonesia. City planning experts believe Jakarta has become too crowded to be considered an efficient hub for government services and businesses. Kita berada di kota yang punya potensi masalah kerugian besar karena kemacetan hampir 60-100 triliun tidak dirasakan tapi real itu terjadi. Jadi bagaimana kalau kita tinggal di kota yang penuh masalah sementara persoalan di luar itu lebih memerlukan perhatian. Jadi ibaratnya. Ketika Jakarta menghadapi problem itu, itu ibaratnya sebagai ibu kota, sebagai provinsi, juga sebagai pusat perdagangan dan jasa. Jadi ketika kita punya masalah di Jakarta ini, kemampuan untuk mengatasi masalah itu seperti deret hitung. Experts say moving the capital outside of Java will be the natural choice. Java is located in a red zone area, prone to natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, flooding, and volcanic eruptions.
resulting infrastructure development would also benefit other parts of the country. By moving the capital, investors will start looking at locations outside of the island, such as in Kalimantan or Sulawesi. Officials believe such a move will help Indonesia accelerate economic growth. But some say the proposal comes with its own sets of challenges. The disadvantage is, I think, uh, we can relate it to the, the first one is the cost of moving to the new capital, I think, is very expensive. And it can take more than 10 years, not only for the infrastructure project, but for the city planning until finish. And the second one, I think, it can create the new problem of the inequality because Jakarta people move. Uh, the government from the Jakarta moved to the new capital city, let's say in the Palangkaraya, in the Kalimantan. So there's like a gap in terms of the wages, gap in terms of income between the new people come from Jakarta and then the local people. The government has not said where it is prefers to move the capital, but Palangkaraya in central Kalimantan remains one of the front runners. It is strategically located far away from natural disasters. Its population of around 230,000 people also means that it is far less congested than Jakarta. The government is still researching how much the move will cost and how feasible it is in the next 5 to 10 years. With Widodo about to begin his second term as president, the relocation plan will be the priority on his agenda. He believes the move could help Indonesia become a more developed country and a bigger power on the global economic stage. Wendy Widiantini for ASEAN Today, Jakarta. We like hearing from you throughout the ASEAN region and the world. All of our episodes are posted on YouTube, so check us out there if you can't find us on your local TV channel. Then let us know what you're thinking about or what you want to see on the program. Email us at ASEANtodayTV at gmail.com Post something on our Facebook page or tweet us at, at ASEAN Today TV. Before Thailand chose its prime minister, the country officially crowned a new king in an elaborate three-day ceremony. A royal procession was held for King Mahafachirolongkorn on May 5th after formally ascending the throne the day before. The coronation came more than two years after the death of his father, King Bumibon Adunyade. Dressed in gold-embroidered clothes, the 66-year-old king was carried through the streets by 16 men, accompanied by a marching band. And that's ASEAN Today for this week. I'm Raisa Chintami of the Indonesia Channel in Jakarta. Terima kasih. Please, join us again next time.